guys. Uh, so this guy is really pretty awesome. His name is uh, Steve Wang, Steve Chinson Wang, Chinson Wang. I don't know sure if I'm murdering his name or not, but really, really talented designer. You can just see some of this stuff. It's just kind of amazing um, the kind of work that he does. Very impressive. Uh, he's also a sketch artist and uh, 3D modeler and does a lot of concept development. Anyway, so he contacted me and he asked me, he sent me this picture, this is a Sid Mead image, and uh, he said, how would you build this? Would you build it in Moe? Would you build it in Blender? And I kind of thought about it for a long time, did a bunch of tests, and kind of came up with how I would approach something like this. And keep in mind when you look at this, this, this little shape right here that we're seeing right here, by my calculations, it's probably five revolutions around. And this, that's, that's consistent with the way Sid Mead designed things. And Sid was a master of perspective. So I can pretty much uh, be sure that when I look at this, that he's not cheating the perspective. Now he might cheat some of the geometry, but he'll never cheat the perspective. Uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say should never. He does use glide projection, which is kind of a, a perspective cheat. But, but when you look at his stuff, you can pretty much know that what he's, what he's set up is something that's pretty, pretty accurate. So anyway, so I want to talk about how to do this. And really the biggest challenge here, it's not doing this little bullion over here or any of this stuff over here, or even adding all these little greebles around it. The biggest challenge is how do we build the geometry on this sphere so that it wraps around five times? And so that's the challenge that, that uh, I thought about and uh, came up with some different approaches, but I kind of like what I ended up with because it's somewhat non-destructive. So you can continue to generate geometry on top of this sphere. Now, this is not a for beginner type tutorial. This is very advanced. And if, you know, I'm just going to tell you right up front that a lot of you may look at this and go, yeah, this is, this might be a little too much for me, which is fine. Because the point is, is that I was trying to communicate to Steve how I would approach this and what, what it is that he would need to do in order to do that. And he is a fairly advanced 3D modeler as well. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. So I've been trying to figure out how to wrap geometry around a surface for quite a while now. And in fact, SketchUp, I've got a video on how to do it. And in Moe, I've got a video on how to do it. I never really had the reason to do it in Blender, but when I started looking, I realized it's quite difficult to do. And then I ran across this video by Enigma Studios, Wrap Geometry on Surface. And it's a great video and explains a lot about kind of a, kind of a simple system for doing it and I highly recommend that if you get a chance take a look at this video okay so here's where we start I've just got a plane here if I tab into this I've got this uh, plane basically you can see it's just a plane and I've duplicated that and created called one called wrap and uh, for now if we just look at this uh, object I added a mirror so that as I edit one side it's going to edit the other side and I can go in here and if I want to just, you know, shifty, grab this, you know, move it around, scale it. You know, I'm, I'm in edit mode, of course, you know, uh, move it over here. Let's go into the vertice mode, we'll move it like, uh, line it up something like this. Maybe, I don't know, you know, E, extrude it back. It's gonna select all those, shift in. Okay, so, so basically I've added that and now it comes automatically over here. Something, you know, you just keep, keep on playing with this. Just add whatever details that you want to. Once you're done with it, we've got this surface, right? Uh, and what we'll do is we're going to add a surface to form to it. And the surface to form means that we're going to use this to wrap around another surface. Okay. And so before I turn this on, let me show you the other surface. So the other surface is this surface here. It's called wrap so I'll turn this one off and that's here I'm gonna turn this off so there that the other service is there now if you look at this I've added a sub a shrink a, a subdivision with simple to get to, to create something that's going to bend so that when I do turn this on it's going to actually bend properly and so that's the second that's called my wrap service and this is the, this is the wrap and this is the wrap surface so I'm gonna leave it off right now because when I link these up Let's turn this one back on. So here, when I link this one up, by the way, notice I also added a subdivision surface into he, in, in here as well to give us a lot of good geometry that we can bend. So what I need to do first is with this, this surface being flat, I go to this surface and I take this surface to form modifier and let's, uh, let's turn it on and let's uh, unbind it. Okay, so then I basically want to I want to take that surface to form modifier and there it is. And I want to select 
the wrap surface. So now I've selected this surface up here, and then I hit this bind button, right? So the bind button basically says, for this surface, the wrap surface is gonna follow whatever happens to the wrap, but it's not gonna collapse completely. If I use a surface to form on that, it's gonna collapse everything right to that face, but I don't wanna do that. So here we have just, you know, just the, uh, the setup done. And with it done, then I can go in and let's go ahead and hide these, uh, hide these guys for a second. And let's turn on our sphere. So let's take a look at our sphere for a second. So I'm gonna tab into this and notice that the sphere is uh, viewport viz. It's just these four vertices, right? It's just, that's it for the whole sphere. This, this one has got a weight of one and all these other vertices are a weight of zero. And so when I turn on the bevel, it's gonna give me this. This is a big bevel and I've got 48, so I can adjust the numbers as I want. This number just needs to be higher higher than that. So I just, you know, whatever it needs, you know, just needs to be high enough to, so it's that. And then I'm using the weight mode on vertices and that's gonna give me that. And then of course, I add a screw and the screw gives me this. And so the screw, I'm doing 72 degrees. Why 72? Because this object that we're trying to recreate it's got five, the way I've calculated, it's got five of these. So I'm gonna create just one slice of it. I'm gonna edit that and add stuff to it. And then we'll array it five times. So this is the object we're trying to create. So we go back in here. And then what I've done, if you look at this, I've actually offset it half of 72, which is 36. So I can get it like this. When I've done that, you know, it's, it's offset, but it, it has to be set to the rotation because we're gonna array this later. So, so there's my screw. I've got this, you know, this vertice right is tab into this. I can grab this vertice, say X, uh, get rid of that. So there, and then now I've got it inverted. Okay, so now we have screw 72 uh, angle, and then I've got 35 segments across here. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, across here. Uh, I can turn on smooth shading, but I'm not doing smooth shading right now because I'm, I want to see the actual resolution. Then we'll go in and we're going to add an array modifier. So that array modifier is simply five and i'm using an object offset i've got this empty so if i look over here there's this empty right here and it's been rotated 72 about this z so when i as i rotate that as i rotate this i'm rotating the number of of uh versions of my array so if i set this to 72 why 72 because 360 divided by 5 is 72 so and then we'll come back here and we'll turn the screw off and the array off and then i have just a mirror to go on the bottom and you know we can see that there's our object turn off wireframe so you can see uh, what's going on so that's our object that we're going to wrap around so i go into my wrap here i'll turn it on and i'm going to go into the its modifiers and we have a shrink wrap remember we had the subdivision and we also have a shrink wrap and it's already set so i'll just do it again i'll set it to the sphere and then I'll turn it on right here. Now it's wrapped on that sphere. You can barely tell because it's it's wrapped so tightly. If I go into my Z, you'll see you'll see that you can kind of see it there. So uh, now that that's done, I'm going to go back to my wrap surface over here. And remember, we have bound it. We already did the binding, so we have this now automatically wrapping around there, right? So if I scroll down, after I did that surface to form and it was bound, then I'm going to do this. Um, array and then i'm going to use the same exact settings as i did previously and i'll turn that on and now we have this array and so it goes around like this and then when i'm all done i can just go into kit ops or anywhere and just say convert to mesh you know select select that and say convert to mesh and we're good to go actually i'll show you what i'm talking about and we'll just say uh, convert to mesh and we'll go to here this thing convert to mesh and i'm going to shade smooth this and this i'll shade smooth it and Q auto smooth it so and that's what we have we have uh, we have a little dimple in here tab uh, a we just need to say merge at by distance and we removed 853 vertices now we're good so that's all that was so that's really the process and what's kind of cool about that process is all you need to do is tab into this and edit this plane right and then you can do it with more planes you want one from the top view you do one up here and then you just mirror it so it goes on the bottom so you can just use this same workflow to keep adding stuff hope that's uh, helpful thanks bye